In this demonstration, you will learn how to isolate and compute the positive and negative flow rate through a clip plane which can yield important insights in quantification of reverse flow. In this particular model, you have some reverse flow from this duct that you would like to quantify to help you understand improvements in reducing the amount of reverse flow. To illustrate this, turn on the velocity and color and add a velocity vector to the clip plane. Add velocity vector arrows onto this clip plane. Left click the clip plane and drag it out to visualize your reverse flow through the plane. Turn off the velocity vector part and select your clip plane in the parts list. Next, use the flow function calculator by selecting flow and velocity under the predefined function parameters and press on evaluate for selected parts. This displays the net flow. You can see that this routine is using the surface integral, velocity, and the surface normal direction. You can isolate what is positive and negative flow through this system within Ensight. You will then be able to compute the flow on just those portions which have a positive or negative flow through this particular plane. The first thing to do is to use the normal function to create a unit vector normal. On this clip plane, head over to the calculator and search for normal. Scroll down and select the normal function. This computes an elemental based vector variable, which is a unit normal. Next, press on evaluate. To look at the vector arrows based on this normal, select the create vector arrows feature icon. Change your variable to normal and press on create with selected parts. It is essentially a unit normal in the positive direction. This is the direction you want to reference as positive flow. First, turn off your vector arrows part at the very bottom of the list. The next step is to use the dot product to take this velocity and isolate both a positive and negative by using the dot product of the normal and velocity. Select this clip plane once more and go back to your calculator function and select a user-defined function named dot product, which will ask you to dot two different vectors together. Select normal and velocity and name the variable as scalar velocity. Press on evaluate. You now have a new scalar field. If you were to color it by that same scalar field, you will see that you now have a positive velocity and a negative velocity. You now have isolated and computed a velocity that is either aligned with the normal or against the normal of this particular plane. As soon as you update the location of the parent, that field updates as well, allowing you to continue using this function as you analyze the flow in this pipe. With this new scalar velocity, you have taken the component normal to the plane and isolated that out as a scalar field. You can then begin the process of calculating the flow rate on the negative part separate from the positive. To accomplish this, you can use the greater than and less than calculator functions. This allows you to keep the value defined in the element for a less than field and then assigning it to cap at a particular value. Open the calculator function and head over to the user defined function. Select greater than, add the scalar velocity field which is the if field, add 0.0, .0 as your reference, and name your variable positive flow. Anything that is greater than 0.0, .0 will be pinned and kept as a scalar field. Anything less than that value will be pinned to 0. Press on Evaluate. Looking at this field, you can see it is now pinned from a minimum of 0 up to a max. Color it by the positive flow scalar. You have successfully pinned the value and it can go no lower than 0. If it was less than 0, it would simply be pinned back to 0. This is a way of isolating out all values on the positive side or greater than 0. You can do the same with the less than function by selecting the scalar velocity again and typing 0.0. .0. Name this negative flow and press evaluate. This is for any negative flow and is taking again the scalar field and pulling off the minus value or negative value. 
All the negative flows will be the area over here, and everything that's above zero is now pinned to zero. You now use the normal function to create a normal vector. You also use the dot normal to achieve a scalar. Finally, you use greater than and less than to isolate scalar fields into positive and negative aspects. Now that you have this scalar field, you can go in and use our integral option, such as integral surface, to integrate the positive and negative flows separately. Going back to your calculator, search the integral surface function. Use the function that appears in the dialog box below. Choose the positive flow variable from the list and type a positive flow rate within the variable name box. Press evaluate. Repeat the same steps for negative flow and name the variable negative flow rate. Press evaluate once more. For the sake of completeness, you can also use net flow rate by naming your variable net flow rate and choosing scalar velocity within the variable dropdown. Press evaluate again. This should sum up to be the same value. If you were to take the positive and add it to the negative, it would equal your net flow rate. Rather than just reporting your net flow rate, which is what you had done before under flow, you have now been able to parse that out and look at both the positive and negative component and really be able to extract out the understanding of quantifying how much reverse flow you actually have and also where it is located. As you move this clip up and down, all the ranges are adjusting as you go. Your net flow and flow remain the same and the positive and negative flows always add up. This concludes this demonstration on how to isolate and compute the positive and negative flow rate through a clip plane which can yield important insights in quantification of reverse flow.